Ah, Vars Mode, a 3D printer salesman's best friend. If you've ever gone to a trade show where 3D printers were exhibited, you would have no doubt seen Vars Mode being implemented on the machines that people were trying to sell you. Why? Well, Vars Mode makes 3D printers look way faster than they really are and lets you print large, interesting looking objects quickly in a sales room environment. It's commonly used for, well, vases, but in this video, I'm gonna show you my experiments to hack vase mode to do all sorts of other things like this. Let's get started. Ah, welcome back to Maker's News, guys. So as I said, vase mode is a very interesting setting you can employ in your 3D printing slicer to create interesting shapes. And the most important thing that sets vase mode apart is how it works. So a conventional 3D printing slicer for FDM machines will print layer by layer, up and up at a certain increment, say 0.25 millimeters, 0.1, doesn't matter. It'll just print up and up and up. Vars mode is different. Instead of doing that in increments, it will slowly build up an outline of a part and it will slowly drop or raise your Z axis or Z axis, which is your height, to create that part. This means that vase mode prints such as this are completely hollow. They look impressive. They weigh nothing because there's no plastic in them and they print extremely quickly. So I believe Slicer was where vase mode originated from. I may be completely wrong here. So let me know in the comments if I am. But vase mode has been around for a long time and it's conventionally used to print, well, vases. It takes a cylinder and if you load an STL file of a cylinder, it will print the base if you like and then run the vase mode up and then leave the top empty again if you like, leaving you with a quick, easy to print vase. But I wasn't convinced to use vase mode just for vases. I wanted to see how far I could push this fast 3D printing method to print other things. So I designed this. It's basically just a hexagon with an increasingly steeper angle. So it starts at 90 and then goes in 10 degree increments all the way to completely flat or I guess 180 or, or zero. And I wanted to see how far you could push the vase mode before it would start failing. So to start with, I did this one. So this is printed on the Chidi Tech X1 and it's printed at 0.2 millimeter layer heights with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And the output diameter was set with the automatic in Simplify 3D, which is 0.48, I believe. And it's interesting, it got up to 50 degrees before completely failing, as you, as you can see here. Um, it just made this sort of spider web and it couldn't do anything beyond a 50 degree overhang, which is already more than the recommended 45 degrees. So we're already onto an interesting, interesting uh, investigation here. Then I wanted to see what an effect a lower layer height would have in making this file uh, print successfully. So I made a 0.1 millimeter layer height test and it got up to 60 degrees, which is interesting. And it makes sense because although vase mode does incrementally lay plastic on top of the previous layer, it's not a step-by-step -step thing. It's, it does keep going up it does still have a certain distance between the previous layer. In this case, it's half what I did before, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And in this case, it got to 60 degrees before failing. It's interesting, you can see beyond 60 degrees, it starts to sort of make this weird little nest and again, like, fail in an interesting manner. What's interesting though, is the transparency of the part as well, because as the layers get steeper, they're further away from each other in space. Therefore, the plastic gets a little bit thinner and then eventually fails. So the first layers are quite quite opaque, but that 60 degrees is actually pretty translucent. You can actually see through it pretty easily, which is pretty cool. And as a final test, I wanted to see what an effect increasing my extrusion width would have. So I used the same machine, again, the Chidi Tech X1 with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but in this case, I made the extrusion width 0.8 millimeters, which is double the nozzle diameter. You might be thinking that's, why would you do that, Angus? That's very, very strange. But it came up with this result, which is really interesting. So for a start, it's tougher. It's stronger than the other one because the layers, the lines are thicker. But what's really interesting is it got to 70 degrees, which is almost, almost a complete overhang over nothing. But what's fascinating, again, going back to the transparency, is at 70 degrees, it goes almost completely transparent. But the previous layers were very thick and to be honest, pretty ugly and um, completely opaque. So that's an interesting experiment. And what I developed is a technique to use Mesh Mixer to show you if a file would be 3D printable in vase mode. So for a start, vase mode has a few rules. It is a continuous line. Therefore, you cannot have a file that branches off into little points. 
because you have to imagine that the extruder has to then jump between points and it's no longer true vase mode. It needs to go in a continuous outline. It can expand and contract. It can go within itself in all sorts of contortions, but it can't jump between points. That's the first rule. Second rule, again, as we said, are overhangs. So the technique I came up with in uh, Mesh Mixer to measure if an overhang would work or not would be to get the file. Then you go into the overhangs uh, analysis and you enter the number that your machine is capable of by doing this test. Again, this, by the way, this file will be in the description of the video if you're interested in using it to test your machine's capabilities. So where it shows red, that's where it's beyond the overhang capability. So if it's showing red, that's most likely they're gonna, going to fail in your VARS mode testing. And to test the other side, because again, it does apply to both sides, that overhang, whether it'll succeed or not, just flip the model 180 degrees using the transform tool, then use the analysis again and see if there's any red. Hopefully you shouldn't see any red except for the base. Remember, you can have the base flat, like with this model here, that's fine, it's on, it's on the base of the printer, but that wouldn't work like that, if that makes sense. So that's the technique I came up with to test files that I download to see if they would work in VARS mode. And surprisingly, a lot of them do work, but you will see little areas of red which would normally fail, so keep that in mind. But then I got to thinking, if these areas that fail leave openings, maybe I can make VARS mode intentionally leave openings. So I did this. This was my first test in experimenting with this sort of intentionally leaving voids in VARS mode. It's a cone that I have voxelized in Mesh Mixer, which is using the Make Solid tool and the, the blocky option. It pretty much turns into lots of blocks. And I intentionally did this and sliced it with VARS mode because each block has a flat top, but VARS mode isn't going to print that. It's gonna to jump to the next outline and it jumps and jumps and jumps and jumps as it goes around. So from this view, it looks completely uh, solid, but when you rotate it, it's actually completely hollow. And an interesting side effect, it's actually much stronger than it would be if it was just a single outline actually, because it's triangulated itself. The outline, the jumps, they're not perfect because it's over thin air. So they kind of make little triangles. So with that in mind, I looked at practical applications of doing this kind of void in VARS mode testing. The first thing I came up with was a pencil holder and you would have seen that printing on my Prucha i3 Mark II review. It's sort of a really interesting wavy look and uh, that, that worked, it printed fine and I was really happy with the design, but it didn't work functionally because it was too thin and uh, light. The thing about VARS mode, you're printing quick with not much material, so you know the parts weigh nothing, <laughs> which you gotta keep in mind. So back to the drawing board, I thought, okay, what else could I print that would be functional? And I got the idea of a strawberry pot. So a strawberry pot takes the runners of strawberries and it has openings in the side where they can spill out because strawberries like to, you know, have those runners and they like to spread out. So that they've especially pots, special pots designed for it. So I thought, okay, I'll design this file. So this file took a quite a while in Fusion to work out the overhangs and work out how it would work. But essentially, it's the, same con it's the same concept as this cone. It builds up to a massive flat that is ignored in VARS mode, especially in Simplify 3D, if you turn off all top layers, which I have done to make it an open top. And it builds up and then jumps across and it does a massive bridge across these openings. And I wanted to make sure that bridge was a complete straight line. You can't bridge a curve because the plastic will follow the path over thin air. So I inserted little uh, sort of bevels or chamfers, I suppose, that make that bridge flat and not in a curve. And then it eventually comes back to the curve and builds up again. So this took a few iterations. Uh, the first one I tried was this. I wanted to make it because I like printing the pots in biodegradable materials. These are all PLAs, by the way. This is the algae PLA I tested a while ago from 3D Fuel. And I did make a pot using this. It was a small mini nuke pot quite a while ago. It just stinks though. It smells so bad. I could not keep this going. It stank up the whole room. And the, the droop from it is ridiculous. The melting temperature is very low. And although this one I did slice with the, the thicker extrusion width, the 0.8 extrusion width, so it is stronger than my final, but it just looks terrible. So that was not very good. And then I tried a wooden one, which was actually decent apart from those overhangs. Again, they are over thin air and if the plastic's not cooling quick enough, especially with these material filled PLAs, they don't cool very fast. You get this sort of awful look. Didn't like that. Then I tried to print in the Poly Alchemy Elixir, which actually worked pretty well. I left that with my mum because she liked it. 
And the final outcome was this, which is actually using the PLA that came with the Prusa i3. I thought it was a nice looking PLA and it printed really well. Uh, again, this was printed on the Prusa i3 Mark II and I'm really happy with this result. It's got a few deviations, you know, where the cooling's not so great, but honestly, for an experiment, this is pretty cool. And I'm really happy with the outcome. The, a few things to note is because it's doing a continuous outline, it will sometimes jump over areas you don't want it to jump, like here you can see it's jumped over where that opening is, but again, it's just a thin line. You know, no one would even know that was there. So just to finish up, I sent this file to my buddy Aiden, who runs the XYZ Aiden YouTube channel, and he recently bought a two millimeter diameter nozzle for his 3D printer two millimeters is just ridiculous. But I really like the idea of pumping out fast prints using a thick nozzle when you want a large functional object quickly and you're not too worried about the finish of it. So I sent him this file and said, give it a crack. And he actually managed to print it. He printed it with one millimeter layer heights, which is still nuts. But the, and, it's, and it's got the, the two millimeter diameter nozzle. So that would be a really strong functional pot. This one, you know, you know it's, too, it's too flimsy, honestly, but, um, I would like to try that sort of thing in future. I want to get a large diameter nozzle, maybe with a volcano hot end from E3D, and maybe like just a really quick, big, fast printer that is very good at printing fast VAS mode prints. So thank you very much guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this experiment in VAS mode on me pushing it to do things other than vases because after all, it is very fast and it uses very little material and it looks impressive. So if you can use it to do a functional object as well, other than a vase, I suppose, then all the better. If you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, guys, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a massive amount. I love bringing this content from our brand new studio here in Wollongong. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.